Alexander picks up his royal insignia ring from the beach. Alexander pushes the plank. A box has been partially buried under... Alexander takes the coin and leaves the ruined box where it is. Alexander's ring is made of the purest gold and has the insignia of the royal family. Alexander is carrying a copper coin of Devantry. King Graham Grick.
I have this copper coin. Is it of any value to you at all? Hmm, most interesting. I have never seen a Daventry coin before, but it is copper genuine enough. I might even find a buyer who is interested in foreign currency. The items on the front counter are the only things in the store that I can let go for the price of one copper. You may make your choice from there. Alexander looks at the items on the counter to make his selection. That mechanical nightingale looks intriguing. I believe I'll take it. Very well. Your coin is well spent. Remember, this is a pawn shop. I am always willing to take back my own goods in trade. I'll remember. Thank you. How fare you, good merchant? I could use more business, if the truth be known. Towering mightily over the other pawn shop curiosities, the stuffed bear makes an ostentatious display. The back wall of the shop holds various odds and ends. For example, a hull hole detector for finding those hard to spot holes in small sailboats. A tall skeleton lends an air of mystery to the shop. The back wall of the shop holds various bottles and potions. For example, a bottle labeled Owl Courage Potion for spineless owls. <coughs> the land of the Green Isles must have at least one inhabitant with interest in the mystical, for a crystal ball has been traded in along with the more common household goods. Alexander winds the mechanical nightingale and places it on the ground. The mechanical nightingale sings a sweet, tinny tune. The real nightingale in the tree cocks her head and listens intently. The nightingale flies to a lower branch and looks at Alexander curiously, as if she were deciding that this human might not be so bad. Alexander sorts through the odds and ends that the pawn shop owner dumped into the pot. Magic exploding gum wrappers, a shattered crystal ball, a cracked wand, a fake thumb. Hmm. Near the bottom, Alexander finds a little glass bottle labeled ink. It appears to be empty, but Alexander decides to take it anyway. You never know when a small bottle will come in handy. Two, 
Still missing something. The magic map doesn't teleport objects. something. What am I missing? Alexander pulls out his magic map. Alexander feels a strange pulling sensation. Alexander d That's what I'm missing. Okay. I think I'm missing something now. Hearing, taste, sight, touch. Listen. There's five of them. Taste, hearing, sight, touch. Oh my goodness, I'm missing something. I have to cheat a little bit here. It's been a while since I've played this game. Foot, mint, a feather. That's what I'm missing. Oh, it's been a while since I played this game. The path, like destiny, cannot be altered. Oh, stop it. Alexander pulls out his magic map. I need the feather and the flower, a sense of smell. Wow. Alexander feels a strange pulling sensation. It's late. I think I know what the five senses are. The sense of smell. There we go. Alexander. Alexander picks the flower and is startled by its hideously strong skunk like odor. There appears to be something. This is going to come in handy later, but I'm actually going to have to definitely use Alexander pulls out point. his magic map. Now we can go to the Owl of the Crown. Alexander feels a strange pulling sensation. Yeah, it's been a while since I played this game. What am I doing in the Owl of the Crown? There's no reason to bury the Dude, quit being difficult. Alexander map. pulls out his magic map. Maybe the Isle of Wonder, not the Isle of the Crown. Alexander feels a strange pulling sensation. I need this item. I wait for it to get a little closer. You wait out too far, I think you drowned. 
I said it's been a while since I played this game. Woo! A little closer, dude. Come a little closer. I think I'm still a little too far out. Alexander picks up the object floating in the water. It appears to be a string of letters. They say, where are you going? Alexander decides to keep the odd sentence, even though it is incomplete. Why aren't you asleep like the other oysters? Oh, I'm so weary, but I can't sleep. I have a terrible ache in my mouth. If you're having trouble sleeping, perhaps you'd like me to read to you. Hey, that would be great! Mm. Alexander C. Yields a gilded minnow of precise measurements. 2,069 centidrills by 3,023,000. Mm. Indicate a... Mm. Alexander makes a grab for the pearl. Hey! You fixed my mouth! It feels great! I... I... Ah, oh, the little oyster drifts into peaceful slumber with the rest of his oyster friends. Save our game. Alexander hears someone coming. Five fierce guards of the Isle we be. Watch for a foreign man, said he. With ears and nose, tongue, hands and eyes. Its nature cannot be disguised. If it man it be, then man it dies. Tom Troll, smell your smell. Do that which you do so well. Alexander holds the flower of stench out to the gnome with the jumbo nose. Tom Troll I am, that's all I'll be. My nose knows all on land and sea. A flower of stench has washed ashore. A flower tis all and nothing more. Listen, hark you, broken oar. Do your duty as you soar. With your ears, please tell us more. Alexander winds the tin nightingale and plays it for the gnome with the monumental ears. A nose is not a way to spy. My ears cannot be told a lie. A nightingale is all there be. No man is near, and so say me. Taste, grim trump, that we might know, whether friend or whether foe. Alexander holds the mint out for the gnome with the gigantic mouth. 
Grump Flump knows a tasty treat. It matters not what others bleat. No danger is this one so sweet. Trilly Dilly, use your hands. Is it beast or is it man? Alexander holds the rabbit foot out for the gnome with the huge hands. Be all you mad? What aileth thee? A bunny can't trill merrily. A hare does not at all taste sweet. A rabbit here is all we greet. Old Bill Batter, never fatter. Vision can resolve this matter. Look you now and end this chatter. Alexander pours the contents of the empty-looking ink bottle over himself. By all that's beauteous, fair, and sightly, four morons do I sleep with nightly. There's nothing there at all, I say. Enough of this. Let's now away. Where they go, because I never see them again, thank goodness. Alexander did it. He's fooled the guards. Mm, wow. Hiya, gorgeous. What a luscious looking hunk of flesh you are. Uh, thank you, I guess. Who are you? <gasps> How charming of you to pretend not to know. I'm Black Widow, of course. The femme fatale of all femme fatales. Know what I mean? <laughs> you know, I was just thinking it was time I found my 50th, uh, another husband. It would be quite a horror, uh, I mean, an honor to have me as a bride. Mm -hmm. Just look at my beautiful weaving. It's so light, so delicate. You'll never want to leave my little nest. Hmm. It is a lovely web, but my heart is elsewhere, I'm afraid. Oh, drat! Uh, <clears throat> I mean, the loss is yours. I'm sure you'll change your mind once you consider the advantages. Hey, don't touch that thread! Alexander snatches the scrap of parchment, curious to see what's written on it. The wind blows the scrap of paper from Alexander's hand but he remembers what it said well enough. What do you think you're doing? I'm sorry. I, I didn't realize these books had an owner. I'm in need of a rare book. <laughs> no owner. All books have owners, my good man. And this book owner, bookworm to you, wouldn't part with one of his books for anything. Isn't there something I can do for you to pay for the book? Hmm, let's see. Do you have an itinerant clause? <laughs> no. No clauses at all, I'm afraid. As an exception, you always should. <laughs> Don't mind oxymoron and diphthong. They're fairly limited grammatical principles, you know. Hmm, <laughs> let's see. A marsh pig that does Texas? Uh, no. I'm afraid not. A dangling participle? I'm fresh out. A purple fiddle My eye is itching. No, I don't think so. Sorry. 
An oh. idiosyncrasy, perhaps? Right now. Ha! Huh, then what good are you? Wow, my eye just started itching and it just not want to stop. Holy cow. Let's go back here. Alexander takes a bottle of milk from the milkweed bush. Apparently the dogwood tree doesn't like Alexander standing that close. Alexander picks up Rotten Tomato and puts him away. One never knows when one will need a Rotten Tomato. Alexander picks a head of Iceberg Lettuce. Ye gads! Is that cold? Alexander pulls out his magic map. Alexander feels a strange pulling sensation. Hello, friend. Aren't you an odd-looking little fellow? I'm not odd-looking, you are! Oh, I'm sorry, I... I didn't realize you could speak. Speak not? Funny is, speech I am and nothing but. Alexander holds the sentence out to the creature. This sentence seems in need of an ending. Perhaps you could finish it? Where are you going? Where are you going? Know what I do? Where are you going to? Like you, I do. Go I with you. Well, that was certainly interesting. It looks like Alexander now has a passenger. Hoping to cool down the boiling pond, Alexander throws in a head of iceberg lettuce. The pond's water slowly stops boiling, cooled by the ice. It still looks hot, but bearable. Alexander decides to brave the steaming pond. Ouch! Ow! Ooh, 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 ouch! The pond is no longer boiling, but it's hardly bathwater. Alexander takes the old hunter's lamp from the tree. As Alexander continues down the path, he gets the strange feeling that he's being watched. Come on over here and see what I'm doing with these flowers. Never mind that stone fella on top of the gate. He won't hurt you any. He's just there to scare you. Not thanks. Alexander picks up the brick. A stone archer sits atop the lintel of the gate like a silent guardian. His stone bow is tightly drawn and fitted with a single stone arrow. You aren't going to listen to me, are you? Well, nope. we'll just see about that. That's odd. 
The gardener just disappeared. Alexander pulls out his magic map. Alexander feels a strange pulling sensation. Alexander sees no use for that item there. That would serve no purpose. Hello, bookworm. I have something you might be interested in. Well, what is it this time? I found this little fellow lost on another island. Coming home I am too. There you are, you naughty boy. I told you not to leave the island. Well, I am seeing you too. A most <laughs> solemn celebration. So, you found my dangling participle. I suppose I'll have to give you something. Oh, let's see now. Was it a rare book you wanted? Yes, sir. Well, then none of these will do. They've been sitting in the sun far too long and must be well cooked by now. This one is far more rare. A delicious little tidbit. Hmm. Uh, thanks. That object has nothing to say. What, Alexander is carrying a rare book. Oh, goodness gracious. Oh, yeah, Alexander yeah. opens the rare book and looks inside. The book contains riddles and has a page missing. Alexander glances at a few of the conundrums, but finds himself more curious about the one that is missing. What was the riddle, he wonders? More importantly, what was the answer? Alexander pulls out his magic map. Okay, I don't have the crown. Alexander feels a strange pulling sensation. Be back, Birdie. Don't go anywhere. Alexander doesn't remember that sign being on the wall before. He decides to take a closer look. It's a proclamation. It reads, Citizens Rejoice, announcing the royal wedding and coronation of Wazir Abdul Al-Hazred and Princess Kasima. For reasons of security, the wedding will not be open to the public. Long live the new king and queen of the land of the Green Isles. Alexander feels his stomach turn at the thought of the dread event. If he doesn't do something soon, Kasima will be another man's wife. Hello. I will be right up. Now. What can I do for you? I don't know if I just messed that up. 
probably just messed that up. Your candy dish is empty. I am sorry, sir, but I have no more mints. Somebody has eaten them all. Well, get some more then. I fear that is impossible. Without the ferry, I can no longer get imports from the other islands, and we do not grow mint extract on the Isle of the Crown. Oh, I hate not getting what I want. How fare you, good merchant? I am as content as the sands on the ocean shore, Prince Alex. Right. I found this large pearl. Might it be valuable enough to ransom back my family ring? I have never seen such a perfect pearl. Certainly you can have your ring back. Oh, I'm glad you didn't sell it. I'm a bit attached to it, I'm afraid. Of course you are. You would be cold-hearted if you felt any differently. I am happy to see a family heirloom back with its rightful owner. Alexander winds the mechanical nightingale and listens to its sweet, sunny tune. I don't need to do that. Would you mind if I traded this in? Of course, Prince Alex. Please, choose something in exchange for the items on the counter. Alexander looks closely at the items on the counter to make his selection. I'll take the flute. The flute? Very good, Prince Alex. May its music always be sweet. Feel free to trade it back at any time. Thank you. Let's see if I just messed this up. Can't talk to that guy in the chair without getting my ring, getting the ring back. Good day again. How may I help you? <sighs> Crud. I messed that up. Alright, where am I at? The pearl, I don't have the book. I don't have the rotten tomato. I'm guessing I gotta start over with all this crud. Maybe I don't. Let's see. Wow. Hiya, gorgeous. <laughs> Just... Hey! Don't touch that thread! Alexander snatches the script. The wind blows the scrap of paper from Alexander. This is why Ale you save often. What do you think? I'm so. <laughs> Isn't there. Hmm. As an exception. <laughs> I'm. I'm. No. In. Did I save my game when I went back to the Isle of the Crown? Alexander takes a <coughs> Apparently the dog Hey, what do you think you're doing there? Get your head Alexander Alexander
All right, here we go again. Alexander Pol. Mm, oh. Alex. Hello, for I'm not. Oh, I'm sorry. I I didn't speak. Not fun. You speak strangely, friend. Strange? My speech is not eloquent. But who are you? Away I fly my home from. Lost I am, therefore. Uh, as my name, too? Can you guess not? It's what I do this branch with and the way I speak of. If you're lost, perhaps I can take you home. Take me home, too? Think not I do. No, you, I do not. Alexander, hold this sentence seems in- Where you go? No, and I like you. Well, that was certain. <laughs> Hoping to cool down the- The pond's water slowly stops boiling, cooled by the ice. It- Alexander de Sun. Ouch! Ouch! The punk. Alexander. As Alexander continues. Come on over. There is no reason to. Brick. Alexander picks up the brick. Sorry about that. I needed a snack. You aren't going to listen to me, are you? Well, we'll just see about that. That's right. That's odd. The go <laughs> Alexander pulled... Alexander. Good rule of thumb. This game is to save it every time you go to a new island. Do this to be on the safe side. Alright, let's try this again. Boop. Hello, book. What? I found. Coming. Black. <laughs> yes, will. Oh, me. This. <laughs> Alexander opens the rare book and looks. What was the? There's nothing to. Okay, okay. All right, let's try this again. Alexander pulls out his magic map. Now we can see it correctly. Pawn shop first. Get the ring back. You, I am yeah, well, yeah, I yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought. Alexander, would you mind if I... Ugh. Of course.
Who's Prince Alex? Alexander, look. I'll take the flu. The Thank you. Now we go to the bookstore. Hello. Although I think if you miss him the first now. time, he does come back later, but it's just easier to... Good Talk day, sir. Now. Is there anything you can tell me about the land of the Green Isles? I'm sorry, but I have no time for idle conversation. I'm too worried about the princess. Determined to learn more about the strange man's relationship with the princess, Alexander shows the man his insignia ring and formally introduces himself. I'm sorry to insist, but my name is Alexander of Daventry, and... I appreciate the offer of the ring, Alexander, but I'm afraid I'm already spoken. Daventry? Where have I heard of Daventry? Flying flip mice. You must be Prince Alexander. <laughs> Cosima told me about you when she arrived home. How came you here? Why, by a ship now wrecked upon the sand. But you know Cosima? She truly spoke of me? Yes, yes, I, I saw her briefly when she first returned home. She mentioned a prince to me, the Prince Alexander of Daventry. I'm afraid that was before she was told about her parents' deaths. You see, she arrived home a few weeks too late. The king and queen thought they'd never see her again. It is said they died of heartbreak. I'm afraid she's blamed herself. What a terrible homecoming. If we had only known... <laughs> Terrible indeed, poor thing. Everyone in the kingdom seems to despair with her these days. The streets are silent. Where is she now? The princess is sequestered in mourning. It's a rather dated tradition, and not required, but the wazir says she insisted out of respect. I see. You've yet to say who you are. And how you know the princess. I? Oh, pardon me. My name is Chalo. I am clown to the royal court and have been since the marriage of Cosima's parents, King Caliphon and Queen Alaria. Oh, those were the happy days. The pair of them were so full of joy and life, so in love. And Cosima's birth. It would be hard to explain how long they had waited. How they had hoped for a child. I mean, she was such a charming little thing. Smart as a whip. Kind and sweet. Oh, she means everything to this kingdom, Alexander, and to me. I'm so terribly worried about her. About her grief over her parents, you mean? Well, the truth is, I do not trust the wazir or his plans for Cosima. I'm still living at the castle of the crown as court clown. His clown. But it is more to keep my ear to the ground than out of loyalty. I wish I knew what the princess thinks these days. <sighs> if only I could find Sing Sing, Cosima's pet nightingale. I might be able to send the princess a message. As it is, I must wait for the end of her seclusion. What can you tell me about the wazir? The wazir? <laughs> now there's a dangerous subject. His name is Abdul Al-Hazret. He came to the kingdom 15 years ago. The king was fascinated by his knowledge and his fine-sounding ideas. It didn't take long for Al-Hazret to convince the king to trust him with the minor problems of daily government. You see, Caliphim had a wife and a new daughter he wanted to spend time with. Al-Hazret became wazir. And now? Well, he's had his eye on Cosima ever since she was a young girl. And she is the only thing between him and the throne. Do you think he means to harm her? Oh, I honestly don't know. I think he'd rather keep her his wife. But whatever his plans for the princess, he will use her to his best advantage. That's his way. Perhaps he has charmed her. Perhaps she cares for him now. 
The Wazir is capable of anything, and Kasima must be vulnerable and lonely right now. Still, she has always instinctively distrusted him. Kasima has a good head on her shoulders. I'd be surprised if she's truly fallen for his words of love. Now I must return to the castle. Look, I don't want to arouse suspicion. I'll try to meet you here again later. Thank you for the information, Jalo. Be very careful. <laughs> I found this rare book, and I thought of your offer. Very interesting. Oh, it is a wonderful riddle book. Riddles are much more marketable than spells these days. I guess people believe more in mirth than in magic. Here is the spell book you wanted, and a fair trade it is, I must say. Enjoy it. I certainly hope so. We shall see how rusty my spell casting truly is. That's a reference to part three. You had to um, cast a bunch of spells in part three. Ah, back her. This is the last page. Nightingale sings her crystalline song in the boughs of the old tree. The Nightingale looks at Alexander curiously, as though waiting for something. Alexander holds out his insignia ring to the Nightingale, hoping she perhaps is the Nightingale that Jallo spoke of, and that she might be able to take the ring to Cosima. The ring is the one thing he has that might alert Cosima to his presence on the Isles. The Nightingale swoops down and grabs the ring. She flies off towards the castle, perhaps to Cosima. Sing Sing, what have you got in your mouth, my pretty? A gold ring? Sing Sing, where did you get this? Realm of Daventry. But this is Alexander's ring. Oh, my soul. He must be here. Sing, sing. I wish you could tell me what you've seen. Is he really here, then? On this very island? Oh, if only I could leave this castle as easily as you. Take this ribbon, Sing, sing. If you know where he is, return it to him. Please be careful, Alexander. It is so dangerous, and yet I could not wish you away. The little bird makes a delivery. <whistles> It's a red velvet Or am I merely wishing it were so? Oh. Alexander examines the red ribbon and finds a strand of long black hair. Alright, where'd the plan go? Hey, bird. Alexander holds out the love poem hoping that the bird will deliver it to the same place she took the ring, in the chance that the receiver might truly be Cosima. The nightingale swoops down, grabs the love poem, and takes it towards the castle. Sing, sing, my sweet. You bring another present. Let me see. It is a poem, sing, sing. 
What was it when I looked at you? What power has chained me through and through, and binds my heart with links so tight, I cannot live without the sight of you? Oh, Alexander. I was hoping he'd return to you. Take this to him while he waits. Hurry, my fleet one. It's a heavy note to the follow, little bird it? makes a delivery. It's a note. Dearest Alexander, I cannot believe you are here, my friend. Please, please be careful. Abdul isn't about to let anyone interfere with his plans. Watch out for Abdul's genie, Alexander, and do not do anything rash. I am not without resources, and I will prevail if I can only find some small means of defense. Do nothing to try to get to me. You must not be endangered again for my sake. Greatly in your family's debt, Kasima. Alexander's hand trembles as he reads the note. For the first time in his long search, he has heard her voice again, if only in writing. No words of love, only friendly concern. Friend? Is the maiden merely shy, or does she regard him only as a brother? Well, we're thinking it there, Alex. Alexander pulls out his... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Again. Alexander feels a strain. And save the game. Alexander takes the Alexander de Alexander startled the poor thing. It This part's tricky. May I have this dance? Oh! Alexander stops playing the flute, but the wall... While Ooh, the wallflowers sure. dance, Alexander snatches the whole... You must never get it the first try. Pieces allowed in chessboard land. That's right. Humans aren't allowed in and never will be. Stay out. I must insist, Your Highness. I shall send the lump of coal to the Wizier and the Princess as a present for their wedding, and that's the end of it. Suppose you'll leave me with only this stupid spoiled egg to send, Your Highness. I want to impress the new king and queen of the realm as much as you do. As queen of this island, I have every right to that lump of coal. Who isn't queen of this isle? The lump of coal is in my possession. Therefore, I shall do as I please with it. Besides, there's nothing wrong with that spoiled egg. 
The egg, though delightfully spoiled, is not nearly so valuable as the lump of coal, and you know it. Your Highness always got to carry the singing stone. It's not fair that you get the coal, too. <sighs> That doesn't count. The singing stone was stolen by that horrid beast. I should get to keep the coal just because my stone was stolen. It wasn't your stone. It belonged to the Isle of Wonder Treasury. Your Highness always thinks that everything is hers. Excuse me, my good man, but could you settle an argument for us? Which of us should get to carry the coal and which the egg? Remember, white is the color of deserving truth and virtue. Quiet, your highness, and let him make up his own mind. <coughs> I, for one, shall be more proper and not even mention the fact that red is the color of love. I'm sorry, your majesties. I'm partial to both red and white, but I'm afraid that I don't know how to solve your problem. One of you will just have to be gracious and allow the other the lump of coal. What a ridiculously stupid idea! Quite ludicrous. He was a lot of help, wasn't he? Curse. Oh, yes. Obviously a man of high intelligence. <laughs> The lump of coal goes much better with my gown anyway. Black and red are imperial colors. That's the silliest thing I ever heard. Red does not go with anything, being much too self-conscious. White is the perfect accompaniment to any color. It would be fun to go explore back there, but two of the game doesn't let you or doesn't need you to. Alexander picks up the Red Queen scarf. <coughs> that was interesting. Do -do -do -do. Do -do -do -do. Where is the ticket? What do you think you're doing? You startled me. I was just getting some swamp ooze. Well, you certainly won't get it there! That's not swamp ooze! That's swamp slime! He's right, you know. But he could be a little nicer about telling you he's not a very pleasant stick in the mud. <laughs> Nobody asked you! Be quiet! <gasps> oh, the trials of being a mere bump on a log. I thought this might come in handy the next time your brother starts picking on you. Aha! Finally, old bump on the log's not so defenseless, is he? Hey, hey! What are you doing there? Watch the pulp, would ya? Now, Bumpy, remember all I've given you. The only thing you've ever given me is mud. Take this. No! Not into the swamp! Okay, I give up. Jeez, sorry. Well, I guess it's not very pleasant having things thrown at you. I'm sorry. You mean it? Really? Brother? Brother? Stick in the mud and bump on a log, exhausted from the battle, immediately doze off into naps. Rotten Tomato, being equally lazy, decides to join them. Mm. Alexander fills the teacup with the swamp ooze. Do -do -do.
Alexander pulls out his magic map. I'm gonna go back to the Isle of the Crown and do some things, and then the next step is to go here. And I think that's where I'm gonna stop once I get to this place and pick up later. Because this is about the halfway point. Alexander feels a strange pulling sensation. Alexander. Would you mind if I traded this in? Of course, Prince Alex. Please, choose something in exchange for the items on the counter. Alexander looks closely at the items on the counter to make his selection. Mm, I believe I'll take the tinderbox. Very good, Prince Alex. Enjoy your tinderbox and bring it back any time. Thank you. Alexander pulls out his magic m Alexander feels a and I think this is where we're going to stop because this is about the halfway point if I recall the next step is to climb this mountain and you have to solve puzzles along the way to get to the top and there's a possibility halfway up I might need the book for one of the puzzles. Yeah, I'll need a translator and I have to find it. I have to find it. I know I've got one somewhere. But I'm going to stop here and, um... Taking off your adventurer's cap so soon? Yes, I've had enough. Anyway, there are, um, there were seven games that were released, actually eight, um, which I really like the eighth one, but I can't find it anywhere, at least where I can get it on my computer. Um, but I have one through seven. If you want me to play some of the others at some point, I would love to know, so... Just drop me a line and let me know if you want to see me play some of the others. I also have the prequel King's Quest collection, which I have not completed. Um, that came out a few years back, which is basically telling the story of King Graham early in his reign or before he became king. I can't even remember. It's been so a while since I played that one. Um... But I will play the rest of this game at a later date and finish it. Because part 4 and part 6 and part 7 are my top 3 favorites. Then there's probably part 3 I like. Part 2 is okay and part 1 is okay. Um, and part 5 is okay. But... Part 4 I can pretty much do in one sitting. Just I can play that game all the way through. Part 3 it's a little trickier because it's more of a timed version and you have to type in a bunch of spells and things like that. But I do like that one. So just let me know.
um, if you made it all the way through watching me play. And I'll drop, um, I'll type this into the description as well, if people see it, if they don't make it through the end of this video. Anyway, take care.